Shorts, 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 shorts. Where are they? How often do they happen? And what do they mean for the short squeeze? Exactly what it means. Here's BTS Andrew with the Andrew Mo Money hoodie here. This is limited edition. It has been gone from the merch store, andrewmoemoney.com for the longest time until right now because we're celebrating a hundred, a hundred thousand subscribers this might not be real cash but you know what is the ability for you to be able to jump on that rocket and take off with us so we're giving away rockets we're giving away merch from the merch store and we're giving away because you guys are awesome so make sure to tune in for tomorrow's uh, bell to bell tomorrow we are going to be tuning in with professor meatball and we are going to talk about what happened today why there was so much risky price action how many more shorts had covered and and why is it now that Benzinga's putting out an article that says the shorts might get squeezed, but there really isn't a lot of naked short selling in practice? How true is this? Is this FUD? Do they want you to be able to understand exactly what they put in front of you? And how can Andrew Mo Money, after hours version of Andrew, tell you exactly what's up? All of this and more if you stay until the end of the video and click that like until we get to 2,000 on this video. Let's go. The first thing that you'll notice on uh, AMC's price action is that we often had these bullish uh, these bullish wedges form during the day. In fact, this one was humongous. Let's actually zoom out a little bit and take a look. This one right here in the beginning of the day should have trended a very high pattern. Clove did, right? Clover was up 30% on the day, had the exact same bullish trend right here. So this wedge that we are looking at right here, we want to be able to see exactly why. A clearer explanation than just, well, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, then why did this bullish wedge break out right here, right at the apex of where it should break out? So that is the spot where we were looking for AMC to be able to break out right during the beginning of the day. Now track this over to AMC's price action. It's going to be pretty uncanny right there, right? This breakout should have been the opportunity for AMC to take a major leap upward, and yet we kept getting blocked each step of the way. This downtrend right after this uh, breakout happened right here, confused bulls to no end. Seems like bears had nonstop control on the day, and the worst news kept on coming because we had Ortex showing us that shorts continue to drop. So we had 14.92% down. This was before Power Hour even started, and we had an opportunity to call out the shots here, right? This is shenanigans. We are looking at all shorts covering if the short squeeze was back on Wednesday or Thursday, and it wasn't. It wasn't even close. Wednesday had up to 130% price action. So I'm gonna tell you right now, is the short squeeze over? Has not even begun. We still have a healthy amount above 10%, and likely when Friday's uh, data comes in from T plus two. So they're going to come in tomorrow during the trading day. We're going to see that number pump back up to healthy 15% to 18% levels where it is currently for GME. GME actually hasn't been moving much, uh, closing in at 19 and a half percent ish because it interest changes just a wincy, wincy bit. The other side of it is to make sure that you understand that the options chain continues to change and we still have the momentum that we were breaking out from on Thursday and Wednesday when we had ridiculous hundred million dollars worth of options on the third and the second and the uh, third let me to show you in just a second but first take a look at today's option chain added on sixty dollars right 25 million dollars and additional calls that is bullish over here nine million dollars of extra calls at uh, 65 dollar strike and then another 24 million dollars worth of calls at 70 strikes so those are the price levels to look for for tomorrow originally we had a, a now pit pi <laughs> pitiful uh, puny amount of 14 million dollar puts if you guys uh, see this in this in the chat go ahead and comment down the p andrew couldn't squeeze out the p sound here but what we saw in the third is close to a hundred million on top of $70 strike and 73. Add them together and you got over a hundred million dollars worth of calls and all of them are congregating to the 18th. So we have a couple of dates to be able to pay, point out, but we don't do dates here. We are just paying attention to where is the option chain going and do we still have the full volume of Delta hedging that we need to see 
for the price action of GME to be sustained. Now, let's take a look at what, what Wayne Duggan is saying from Benzinga. AMC jumps another 10% on Monday, and the hashtag naked shorting was trended on Twitter in the process. All right, so now we're looking at uh, Dennis Dick and uh, tell us about whether or not naked shorts are behind the high short interest in stocks like AMC and GME. The shorts might get squeezed, but there really isn't a lot of short naked shorting in practice. So he said many AMC and GameStop traders are misinformed about what GameStop's peak 2021 short interest of around 130% actually means. Well, let's take a look at whether or not they can actually tell us. So, Rehypothecation explained back in February, Bill Hart's former CEO of Modern Markets Initiative, explained that the shorts can have a short interest above 100% due to a phenomenon known as rehypothecation. For example, when a short seller opens a 100, per, 100 share short position, he or she must first borrow 100 shares of stock, right? That's a covered short. Those shares are then sold to a buyer to open a 100 share short position. That buyer can then turn around and lend out the shares to another short seller seller, which can open up a second 100 share short position on the same 100 shares of stock. This is the recursive shorting that I've talked about since the very beginning of this channel's coverage of the short squeeze back in February and January. So this is not the same as naked shorting. Because brokers aren't required by law to tell buyers their shares were borrowed by the seller, Hart said that the chain of hypothecation can continue indefinitely and has sometimes resulted in certain ETFs temporarily having short interest of more than 1,000 percent so if you guys want to be able to read an entire dd from the ground up by austin tobit then search andrew mo rehypothecation search andrew mo house of cards one two and three and uh and just know that part two is actually two parts because that's how lengthy that is uh all of this is regulated by regulation sho a regulation created by the sec and enforced by finra which requires the brokers report all their trades and that fail to clear for one reason or or another. So this list would presumably expose naked shorting. According to Tim Quest, founder of Market Structure Edge, the list doesn't show that. Okay, so there comes the FUD right here. We are looking at Benzinga. Talk to some notable experts, right? Talk to some notable uh, people who are supposedly in the uh, the most researched place that are going against the super stock PhDs that like Suzanne Trimbath, like the researchers like Austin and Talling. There is very little naked shorting, says Quest. Well, of course, right? It's supposedly illegal. It's supposedly under the radar. If there is no obligation to report naked shorting, then the evidence that anybody can provide is not going to give you a definitive yes or no. And right now, it's about the war of the FUD, essentially. Can the FUD have a foothold on the price action before the apes actually get around to understanding what the heck this is talking about? So it's uh, the people who are trying to look for naked shorting here don't understand the way stock market works. It's not naked short selling. It's not illegal behavior that is leading to this. That is the crux of what they are now saying. Originally, they were saying there is no short squeeze, right? Then they wanted to say, okay, there's no gamma squeeze. Now now they're saying that there's maybe some squeezes happening, but there's certainly no naked shorting. How much more can you take in terms of there is nothing to see here until the entire system cracks? So show me some proof. Right? I am a data-driven man. Show me the proof, Mr. Quest. Naked short selling crackdown dicks at institutional investors and hedge funds are often audited by regulators to ensure that they're not engaged in naked short selling, which is illegal. Regulators crack down on naked short selling following the financial crisis in 2008. In 2021, if you are short a stock and the original lender sells his or her shares, the broker must, allocate, must locate additional shares to borrow. If it can't, it will potentially close out the short position in a process known as a buy-in. I've had buy-ins happen to me lots of times. I short stocks. I get that notice. I'm like, I want to be short this stock, I, but I know I have to go cover it right now because if I don't do it, the broker will physically go into my account and execute a buy. Also known as the, uh, the margin calls that we have been saying ring, ring, margin is calling. We don't have too much time to discuss exactly whether or not a short whale or any hedge fund in a short position has the luxury to decide whether or not they want to cover. So that could explain the Ortex data coming back with more than expected decrease in short interest, but only the short interest that we can calculate. Okay, Dick said that there is a handful of small naked short sellers out there breaking the law and no major market play makers like Citadel are opening naked short positions. We will see. Kenneth Griffin, how much do you want to bet 
Kenneth Griffin, Citadel, major market players that we have already had provided the, the market research that we need to be able to open this case wide open. Having uh, influencers and creators as well as this little snippet from CNBC talking about naked shorts. They don't want you to be able to point the finger in the right direction. So you guys had already likely seen this over the weekend. I want to end this video with this clip. It's about 18 seconds. Take a look. A lot of people, there are a lot of short sellers out there that have been borrowing stock they didn't have. In other words, yes, I think there are dynamics shorts, where yeah. retail investors can get caught, but it's 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 really- Look at that face, naked shorts. So that's Melissa Lee from CNBC. Melissa, I have already tweeted at you. If you wanna come on the show and tell us exactly what you meant by naked shorts, are they running rampant? Are you uh, afraid to talk? about information that CNBC has received but has somehow gutted or perhaps restricted, let me know. And if you guys have any leads, make sure to tweet them at me, Andrew Mo Money, Instagram, Twitter, uh, or on Discord. Those of you who know the, the way, this is the way, Webull has two free stocks waiting for you if you go ahead and start using it as a broker or one free stock if you wanna use it as a charting tool. Either way, it's a free tool that helps a ton. So thank you guys for those of you who have supported the show on Patreon. Remember, tomorrow, uh, bell open, we're going to do that raffle winner. I'm going to pick 10 winners. Right? Maybe I'll have to pick a couple more, but I'll pick a triage of winners. If you guys are on that live stream, you guys win automatically. So if you guys uh, had subscribed for 100,000, thank you so much. It's my heartfelt thank you. I need to give you guys a proper 100K celebration. But until that happens, thank you guys, and we'll see you in the money. Peace.